Hey everybody, Mark here at Lowen University. This is lesson 162. In this lesson, we'll be doing some rhythmic reading practice together. And the premise for this lesson is based on the fact that I feel every musician and bass player, I want everybody here at Lowen University to be able to read rhythms at a basic level. Now you might say, well, Mark, I'm in a cover band. I play my own music. I play rock and roll. I'm not gonna be reading sheet music. I agree with you because I'm in sort of the same predicament. And I keep taking these theater gigs I sometimes talk about because it helps me keep my reading chops fresh. That's like the only opportunity I have to do that. And just like another language, German, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, whatever, you don't, you don't speak it, you lose it very quickly. And going even six months between some of these gigs I do, I find my reading chops start to slip. And again, I feel every musician should be able to read basic rhythms. Now, I'm not expecting you to be able to pull up box cello suite number one in G major, or whatever it's called, and sight read that, but, you should be able to look at some basic rhythms and within 30 seconds figure them out. And that's what I want to get you to with this lesson with some practice, okay? So if you go ahead and look at this, these rhythms I want to work with you on, you'll notice that in some cases there's a lot of black ink. Now, I want to take a moment and make an example of how exactly I'm looking at these rhythms. So go back with me for a minute to elementary school when you were first looking at big words. Let's take a word like carbohydrate, okay? Your teacher at one point, or your parents, whoever, you know, might say, you might not be able to say or read carbohydrate right off the bat. And I'm using carbohydrate because when I was a kid, I would pick up, you know, something with a nutrition label on it, see carbohydrate on the back all the time and be like, what is that? I couldn't even pronounce it. But when you learn in elementary school, a teacher will tell you, try to sound it out. Try to phonetically sound it out. So what do we do when we try to sound out a word? We look at a word like carbohydrate and we say, well, I don't know what that sounds like, so I'm going to look inside of the word for things I do recognize. Well, I recognize car, bow, high, and maybe drate or rate. I'm sort of breaking it up into syllables. So when I space them out, that's very easy to say. carb bo, high, drate. When I put it back to one word, I now know how to say it because I've thus learned how to say the bite-sized chunks or syllables inside of that word. Rhythms are the exact same way. So if you look at a bar on this piece of page, piece of page, piece of paper, this page, we're in the digital world now, so there's no paper. So if you look at a bar like, let's say bar 13, that's bad luck, let's do bar 10. Bar 10, you'll notice that if you're not apt to reading music, you might look at that and go, I don't know how that goes. So much like the word carbohydrate, I would look for things inside of that bar that I do recognize. Well, on beat three, I see two eighth notes. I know what two eighth notes look like. I talk a lot about that in the prerequisite lesson, counting rhythm simplified, two eighth notes. Duh, 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 duh. You're basically taking a given quarter note pulse. Quarter notes would just be one, two, three, four. Eighth notes, you're dividing that pulse in half. So one and two and three and four and one. Sixteenth notes are just dividing that in half again. I talk all about that in that lesson, so if I'm already losing you, please go check that out and come back. And I want you to start looking for things inside of each bar that you do recognize. Look at beat four. It's a quarter note. Quarter note is just duh, 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 duh. So you know what that looks like. So you just have to go through the measure now and find other equivalents of the quarter note. And to sum all this up, when I look at a piece of music, I am putting lines between those bite-sized chunks. So if I were to do that with the word carbohydrate, it would look like this. You notice I'm putting lines between those same syllables I was splitting up earlier. Well, if I replace those syllables and the word carbohydrate with bar 10, it now looks like this. I'm dividing it up into things I recognize, or to be really simple, groupings of four, which each quadrant or each group here represents a quarter note that fits inside a pulse. So if I were to put this piece at 80 beats per minute with a metronome, I would want to fit in every group inside of this tempo. Very easy. So if we take something like bar one, it's gonna be like this. Okay, every time I tap my foot, I'm doing another grouping.
okay? And when I look at a piece of music still to this day, when I'm doing these theater gigs and I'm handed music, I see a complicated rhythm, I put those lines and make it into bite-sized chunks mentally. That's the way to do it. And when you're reading across a piece, you're sort of going through each bar and doing that habitually. It's something I do. And, you know, I'm an adult and I still sometimes see words that I have never really used or seen before, or maybe it's just uh, a name, even somebody's last name, and I try to sound it out, I take the same approach. You just divide it up into sections you can say. Reading rhythms is always like this, and the only thing here is that you get quicker at it and you get better at it. When you combine that with reading notes, now you can suddenly sight read. To me, reading rhythms has always been twice as hard, if not more, than reading notes. Rhythms is where all the black ink comes in. And that's the tougher stuff to really look at and analyze on quick, okay? Now understand that there's only so many combinations of notes you can put inside one beat down to the 16th denominator of notes. You can go boom, you can go boom, boom, you can go dunka dunka, and then you can mix and match eighth notes and 16th notes, but there's only so many combinations you can do, and I've pretty much covered every one there is inside of this piece. If we go to bar one, the first beat, we have eighth notes, dun, dun. If you go to the next count, we have dun, dunka. So dun, dunka, dun, dunka, dun, dunka, dun, dunka, dun. The two sixteenth notes work because you're dividing an eighth note in half again. So realize that every count can be dunka, 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 dun, but you're just substituting and halving and doubling notes to make different combinations. That's all this is. If you go to, let's say, beat or bar number seven on beat two, we have dunka, dunka, dun. Ducka, gadaka, 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 gadaka. That middle note is basically just two sixteenth notes combined together as one eighth note. Now the next step beyond this is playing tied notes, you know, dotted notes, but this is a great start, and if you can get here, it's only easier from here in terms of recognizing patterns that you've already seen before. Okay? So I'm gonna put back on the metronome and I just wanna repeat bars one and two. Okay, let's do that. I'm just on note D, so if you wanna do that with me, let's do that, here we go. I want you to, before you practice this, practice going through and just drawing lines between every group. So you're dividing each pulse in each bar into a quarter note. And once you get to there, 80 beats per minute, I would like for you to start using multiple notes. So for the first two beats of every bar, I want you to use one note. And for the second two beats of every bar, I want you to use another note. Going all the way through the piece, it will sound like this at 80 beats per minute. Here we go. Okay, so that's what you want to get to. First, you wanna to get to 80 beats per minute and go through this on one note. Then divide the measure in half, play the first two beats on one note, second two beats on another note. You can do D and E like I just did, that way you don't have to look and change strings. But I want you to start adding more notes in over time. Then I want you to get to the point where you can go a different note every other beat. So instead of D for two counts and then E for two counts, I can now do D, E, D, E. So the first two bars would sound like this. Thank you. 
so on and so forth. And then once you get comfortable with that, I would like for you to use four notes. So you can just use D, E, G, and A. And then the next bar, A, G, E, and D. And then the grand challenge is to go up different notes of a scale. So you would go all the way up a D major scale, for example. So the first four notes would be the first four beats, and then bar two, you would come back down. So the first two bars would sound like this in essence. That is what I want you to do. And this is, this is something you can practice a little bit every day and really work up over time. Follow the goal tempo, but don't move on until the next procedure until you can do it at the goal tempo. Remember to review, that's going one note all the way through at 80 beats per minute, then two notes with one note on the first two beats, two notes on the second two beats, and then the third step would be one note, next note, one note, next note on each beat, so D, E, D, E, all in the same bar, and then using four note groupings, which you can use D, E, G, and A, okay? So you would go up and then keep going up and down throughout each bar divided with rhythms, of course. And then the final step would be to go all the way up and down a full scale all the way throughout this piece. Okay, have fun with it, and we'll see you next time, as I said.